Moving into the next section of this video where I'm going to explain where you can find 3D models and how to then import those models into the Creality Print software so that you can slice them and of course 3D print them. For 3D models, I'm going to recommend something that we've already looked at at the start of this video, which is Creality's marketplace for 3D models. And this is a great place and a great resource for pretty much anything Creality related. So 3D models and like we showed before, downloads, software, etc., like that. But the point from this part of the video is of course 3D models. On the main page, you're going to be looking at something like this. And up the top, you will have your main menu. You can go to the explore section and here you're going to find lots of things such as categories for different type of 3D models that you can download and print. There's also other things like quick links for competitions and maker tools and popular searches. So explore is going to be probably the first place you check out. Collections is another interesting one and you can go through some of these ones. There's practical storage solutions and this is gonna be changing all the time. You can make your own collections and make them public so other people can check them out as well. Or you can make them private and just make your own collections that no one else can see. So this is a great resource to look for particular things. Continuing on, we have contests. So Creality hosts a lot of contests. If you're a designer in some way, I recommend checking this out because it's an opportunity to design something for the world that people can download and print but also potentially you might win the competition and get some rewards. And another part here is search. So you can search for things for 3D models before you go out and try and design something or if you have no design skills at all, it's likely someone's designed and made something if you're thinking about it. So I recommend always going to Creality Cloud, doing a search because you'll probably find something that someone's already created and you can just print it out and you have it. So let's put that to the test. Now, one 3D print that is common throughout the whole 3D printing hobby space is something called the Benchy. This little boat model that's been used as kind of like a 3D printer test. It's usually the first print that people do when they get a 3D printer. I think we should probably download a Benchy and print it out as our first print because that's kind of what everyone does when they get their printer. So since we don't have it on the printer, we can do a search for it. I'm sure it's here. We're just going to type in Benchy and here you go. When you do a search, you're going to find a lot of stuff that people have designed. And I think the basic one is probably the test boat. Click on this test boat. I think that's the default Benchy available. And when you go to a 3D model, you're going to see something like this. So here you'll have some images of the print itself or the 3D model. You'll have some information down here. Usually there's a bit more. You have files available in different formats, so different layers and infills, etc. You can also check out the comments if there's any problems. People have probably commented on the model and offering advice on how to fix any problems. You have print settings. So these are different settings people have tried out and they've modified it in some way, maybe to reduce the amount of filament used or speed up the print or whatever it is. People can make their own profiles and then upload that so that other people can download those profiles. And you can see how many people have downloaded these individual profiles. So maybe this one with 86 is probably the most common one. If we go back up to the top, we can either cloud slice this, so you can slice through the website and then send it to the printer. But in our case, we're just going to want to download the model so that we can do it ourselves basically. So when you download packages, you can just drop on this download package download files. We can click on that. It will then download it to wherever your downloads go to. So then go into your Windows Explorer or whatever you do to find your files. It usually downloads as a zip format, so I need to right click on that and extract it. And so I'll have a new folder here. If I go into that, we can see my Benchy SDL is just here. The most common file type for 3D models is an SDL. Uh, you can also have other file types like OBJs or 3MFs, but typically it will be an SDL that you download. So now that we have it downloaded, we need to jump into Creality Print so that we can slice it and then print it out. So launch Creality Print and then we can move into the next step. 
Okay, we should have Creality Print open. Now I'm going to just do a few checks before we get started. So we need to make sure our device is connected. So I'm gonna check in the device tab and yes, I can see my Creality High Combo is connected and it is currently offline. And if you find that's the case, then you might need to scan it again on your network. It may have changed the IP address since I've turned it off and back on. So we're just going to go to scan add and have a quick search for any devices. And we can see it is here. It is, has actually changed IP address. So we're going to click on that and add it and then close that tab. And this one that is offline is no longer here. So I'm going to right click and remove device and set this as current device. So if you find your printer isn't connecting, it's probably because of that. You might have turned it off and then back on and the IP address has changed. You just need to re-add it. We'll go back to the prepare tab and we're going to import our model. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can either drag and drop the model in from an explorer window into the slicer. You can go to file and then import and you can click on the import section or you can just use a shortcut like control I for import and that's go to the location of your SDL that you've downloaded, click on it and open. And there we go, there is our little Benchy. So that's our model in. Now we need to slice it, but before we slice it, we need to set up some of the settings so that it prints correctly. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that our correct printer is selected. So we can see our current device is Creality High, so that's fine. This section will be our different system presets. So you can see I've got a few different printer presets here, like a K1 and an Ender 3. In my case, we'll make sure our Creality High is selected and you'll need to make sure the bed type is correct. Mine is the textured PEI plate. Uh, that's the default plate that it comes with the Creality High. Moving on to the right side, we need to create some settings here. And I'm not going to go through every possible setting in the slicer for printing because that would take forever. And you're not going to have to go through every setting. There's only really a few key settings that you really need to change. Those things primarily being your layer height, your infill and your supports. So the first one is our layer height. And if you click on this part, you can drop it down. You'll see these different millimeters. So 0 0.12, 1.6, 2, 2, As you're probably aware, when a 3D printer is printing, it's printing in layers. And these layers or their height is controlled in this section. The main thing you need to understand is that the smaller a layer height is, the more quality you're going to get in that print, but the longer it's going to take to print. And the larger the layer height is, the less quality you're going to get, but the faster it's going to print. The default layer height that most people use is either a 0.2 or a 0.24. That's kind of your mid range. If you want a little bit more quality to squeeze out, go a 0.2. If you want a little bit more speed, probably go 0.24. Now, in our case, because the Benchy is quite a small model and it's got a little bit of contrasting edges and shapes involved, I think a 0.2 is going to suit this model. And I can show you the difference if we slice this as well. So ignoring all the other settings, if we just set the layer height and we go to slice plate, this will then move to the preview tab and we'll see some, some of the details of what the print's going to do. So we can see that the printing time is 40 minutes and it uses this much filament. Now, if we change that to 0.24 and we slice the plate, we can now see that's dropped down to 36 minutes. So you can see with changing the layer height, it's actually sped it up. So it depends on your requirements and you'll learn this over time. But in our case, we want to try and show off what the printer can do. 40 minutes isn't too bad. We've got time. Now, the second main thing we need to consider with our slicer settings is infill. And infill is the pattern and the density of what's inside your model when it's printing. Because when it's doing an outside wall, it's just a solid extrusion. But when it moves to the inside, it doesn't need to be completely filled because that's just wasting time and material. So what 3D printers will do is typically just create a bit of a mesh pattern inside just so it supports itself and doesn't collapse and has a little bit of an integral strength, but it doesn't need to make it 100% full of material. And that's what infill is. 
Now, if we go to this side here, we have different settings for things like our quality, our strength, our speed, our support, our multi-filaments and others. And if you can't see a lot of these settings, just make sure the advanced parameters is turned on as well. So quality is basically our layer height and line widths and all that kind of stuff. Controlling settings that show the quality of the print. We're looking for infill, which is under the strength tab. So if we click on strength, we have things like wall loops. Wall loops is a good one. If you want something that's quite strong, I recommend bumping the wall loops up to three or four instead of increasing your infill. Wall loops typically can have a more of a factor towards strength when you need that in a print. So you could put that to three or four if you need something really strong, but it does increase the time quite a bit. Typically default will just be two wall loops. We can ignore all the other stuff. We're looking for infill, sparse infill density. And if you're not sure what a setting is, just hold your mouse over it and it's gonna give you a bit of a brief description. And if you click on it, it's going to go directly to the wiki where you can read a whole bunch of information just on that thing as well. I recommend over time, explore these settings, read about them, learn more and more. That's what 3D printing is about. It's constantly a learning experience. So we're looking at the infill density. So that is going to be controlling how much of the material is filling the internal of the model. So it's set to 15%. Typically that is a default setting and we're not going to change that. And also grid, if you click on that, you're gonna have all these different type of infills. And this is a whole other area that can have its own video basically, but different infill patterns are going to control things like how strong they are, how quick they print, how easily they print. There's a whole different subject here that I'm not going to go into. By default in the 3D printing community, most people will just go 15% and grid for 99% of your models. If you need a bit more strength, you might need to bump this up to 25%, or if you're not too fussed about strength, you could put that down to 10% because you're not making a strong thing and you just want to increase the print time. So you could do that by changing that setting, but we're just going to leave it at the default for this case as well. And we're just going to say 15 and grid. And the final thing that we need to control when we're setting up a print is probably supports. Now supports are, used to basically support a model in the air so that the 3D printer can print on something that isn't touching the build plate surface. In the case for the Benchy, we don't need to use supports because it's been designed in a way that it just doesn't need them. But I will do another model that I've designed myself for my hydroponic garden that does require supports. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. It might not make sense now, but just stick around for the next model and I'll show you where supports are actually used. So just to recap, for our Benchy, we're just going to do a 0.2 layer height. We're going to use the default infill of 15% and cross pattern, and there is going to be no supports. So with those settings, we're going to go to slice plate, give it a moment to create the G code. You can check it out, the settings for particularly the print time and the material, because one, you wanna know how long it's gonna to take to print and two, how much filament you're going to use. And the important factor here is filament weight, because typically you're going to get a filament in a roll, which is a kilo. So 1000 grams per roll. And in this case, it's only going to use 11 grams of material. Now, if this Benchy was really, really big and it was going to use 1.1 kilos of material, well then we got to consider being around so that we can swap that empty roll out for another roll so that it can continue printing. So whenever you slice, just check those things, check the print time and check how much material it's going to use. Then if you're happy with that, we can go to send print. And this window is always cutting off a little bit on the bottom on my computer. I'm not sure if it's the same for yours, but you can just drag this down a bit so that you can see the full window. Things you wanna check here is of course, what printer is it's connected to? And you can see that it's connected to Mark Reality High. It's currently idle. One thing that we do want to do, and I recommend you always do this, is a print calibration. So that's just going to do a few things before it starts printing to ensure that you're going to get the best results once it does start printing. So put print calibration on. We can also check that the material is correct. And in this case, it is detecting the right material. 
And then we have two options here. So we can start the print, which is going to send it, upload it to the printer and start printing, or we can send only, which is just going to send this file to the printer and not print it. And we can go over to the printer and then actually manually print it when we want to. In this case, we just want to start the print. So we can click on start print. It's going to make sure there are no models. So it's just saying, make sure there's nothing on the printer because when it starts printing, if there's anything on there, it may collide and cause a crash and damage your printer. So make sure it is clear before you go OK. And then you can hit OK. It will upload the file. It will do its thing. And then you end up on this screen here. So the printer is now, I can hear it's firing up. It's starting to warm up and get started. And from here is how we can monitor the print. So while it's doing its thing, I'll cover this quickly. As you can see, we're now in the device tab as if we had gone to the more info for the printer. And here, of course, we can control things like the light. We can see the printing time. And once this starts printing, we'll see more details on how much print time is remaining. You can pause the print if you want to or stop it completely and cancel it. Uh, the control, I wouldn't worry about anything like changing this to fast or ultra fast. Just leave it default, that's fine. The only thing you might want to change here is turning the light on and off if you really had to. Of course, you can also see our printing history. And down here you can see some details of just the printer getting ready to print. So the nozzle is heating up, the bed itself is heating up. And all that's left to do now is basically just wait for it to finish printing. So I'll jump to some footage of this printing and the finished results. And then we'll come back to another model where I'll show you some of the support settings. Once you send the print to the 3D printer, it'll take a little while to start functioning. You'll start to do things like heating up the heat bed and the hot end. Also, because we set to do a print calibration on the start, it will purge a small line around the corner of the build plate and also do some other things like bed leveling. And before long, it should start printing down the first layer. Obviously, 3D printing can take a little bit of time because the model needs to be printed out layer by layer. You won't need to do much while it's printing. Just simply check on it occasionally to make sure there's been no problems. But if everything is fine, then eventually the print will complete and the model will be ready to be removed. Now the Creality High does come with a flexible build plate, so you can simply lift this up and give it a slight bend in different corners so that the print releases from the bed. And here's the finished result of our first print, the Benchy. And you can see the quality is really good. So let's move on to the next print.